Hello friends and welcome to Chat from the Engineering Desk. As promised we had to have a look at load cells and Wheatstone bridges and what happens today. So, I've got a blank canvas here today and a handful of pens. So let's get started. How are you all doing today? Have a good week? I hope so. So I'm going to draw out the circuit. So Wheatstone bridge is a set of four resistors all right so looks like that and like that now what you will see on a it's down bridge circuit diagram is that there's an arrow through the one resistor. Now, what happens is you need to provide an excitation voltage to your Wheatstone bridge, which in the case of this luggage scale we're gonna look at this in this video is two volts in DC, all right? And the not volts down here all right so that means that you are two volts across this bridge over here and you've got three fixed values and you've got one value which changes by virtue of the fact that it bonded onto the element your element so something like that and then your traces running like that now if you look at this sideways it looks like that there's those wires and your force uh, if that is the top over there your the force is applied sideways so this then bends and you apply force to it which stretches that causing the resistance to change okay so when that resistance changes the the voltage across this resistor is going to change this is a potential divider so if you I've got one volt present here and one volt present here because these are all the same value um, let's call them 500 ohm 500 ohm 500 ohm 500 ohm okay all the same value that value over there is going to change when this element flexes which means that this voltage with respect to naught volts is going to change which means that the voltage between these two points is going to change so if you have Now that, that would be um, as microvolts that this is measured in. So you'd at this stage have no volts with no force on that with stone bridge. Okay. Now this excitation voltage gives you a, a microvolt per kilogram per volts of excitation. There's a ratio. So the higher your excitation voltage, the higher this potential difference in relation to each kilogram put on here will be. 
so that's how that formula works now if you change the the value of that if you apply force that's going to go up to 600 ohms which means that here um, the wrong way it's going to go down that resistance goes up so this voltage goes down so you enter a potential difference between these two so if I apply a kilogram of force over there um, you're going to end up with um, say one microvolt potential difference two kilograms two microvolts that symbol is wrong by the way but that's okay so you obviously need a fairly sensitive amplifier to amplify that very small voltage which is what strain gauge or load cell amplifiers are for and it also needs to deal with um, noise rejection and so on because you've got fairly these are very low voltages and you're amplifying it to something like a 0 to 10 volt signal okay so we're not going to get into that we're talking about load cells today and um, we've got a luggage scale here as an example i've taken it apart i'm going to show you what's inside and i'm going to show you how this voltage measurement changes as you apply force to the beam of the load cell so right let us fetch our load cell put our pins out the way I will move this over here and then bring in this we will also be needing a multimeter like so which we are going to connect to it so starting off there's your load cell beam over there okay but you can see the four wires going to it and there's the element underneath the the rubber seating compound over there to stop um, any moisture and other things from getting to it and degrading it so this is this goes through a hole in no contact there so when you pull on this because it works like this okay it, it flexes this beam downwards like that and it and it stretches the um, the resistor in the Wheatstone bridge and changes its resistance then you get a reading so if i hold that down and you can see that it's reading not kilograms so it it zeroes itself on power up the you can re-zero it once it's powered up as well power zero and then this scale can provide you with um, either degree C Fahrenheit or kilograms um, I'll show you change it to pounds anyhow as you can see I've soldered some wires onto the the sense terminal so here you got positive sense and your negative from the battery which lives over here it's a 2032 cell that lives in there so in other words this has a 3 volt supply so if I take this make sure you can see it and I push down on the beam uh, 
get back. Apply force. You can see it over there, and you can see that I'm clearly pushing down with my thumb on the beam there. As the same as pulling on this over here with my hand produces force on it. This can handle up to 50 kilograms of force. So let's set that down. Um, set that to millivolts. And I'm going to attach the crocodile clamps to it. Um, millivolts. See how it's saying 0.7 now. What the software in this thing does is it, um, it automatically zeroes out that offset over there when you power it up. And now when I apply force with my thumb, you can see that reading change on the multimeter. And as I said, it's in microvolts. So in other words, we are getting about 400 microvolts um, uh, when it sees a steady reading it holds automatically so that's what it's done there is it's recorded the value <clears throat> when the when the measurement stabilized So that's that value of there changing. Now, as you saw, it measures temperature as well. And I was wondering if anybody has spotted it. On the back here is a diode. That's your temperature sensor over there. So when I change it to temperature measurement, like so, I put my finger over there. It's going to warm up the diode and what this does is it um, samples every once in a while so what it should do as it just did is it updated to the warmth my finger is put into that diode over there and that's your temperature measurement um, it's going down again. So that's just your power button over there. And over there, your function select. This is not the backlit version. So therefore, there's no LED in the screen. But I know you can get backlit versions as well. And the power consumption is low. I think since I bought this 10 years ago, I've had to change the battery once. And there's a, the, the strap which you put around your luggage, the handle, when you do the measurement. So I'm just going to put it to volt and show you the excitation. So when I probe the red and the black wire, there's your excitation onto the bridge. And then so that I didn't have to hold the probes, I soldered some wires on there. And that's your bridge, and now it works. Um, not much else to it. So that concludes our talk on um, load cells and wheatstone bridges. We're not delving into the electronics of um, the amplifiers and stuff and what goes on in here or a commercial instrument today. Focuses on understanding a load cell, a, le a Wheatstone bridge operation. And if you ever get to work with one, now you know what to look for. So, thank you for being here. Thank you for being here till the end. You're welcome to like, subscribe and comment. And for the rest of an awesome day further, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you back next time for more cheers